All right, guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing good. I uh, hope you've had a great day. Um, it's like five o'clock almost here where I'm at. So day is actually almost over. I hate when the sun goes down at like six o'clock. I don't know about you all, but man, that, that really messes with me. I wish they just leave the time uh, the way it is and not roll it back as it's getting dark early. I just, you know, man, it getting dark around five or six, just it really messes with me. Um, but anyway, been doing a lot of thinking, got another thoughts and opinion video, uh, on the Sebastian Rogers case and, um, had a comment left for me yesterday, had a comment, um, and I like it. I like it. And Bernadette, Bernadette, thank you for the comment, um, you kind of helped put me back on track. And uh, let me read you what she said. Uh, she said, I think we should all still be focused on Katie, her silence and storytelling is much more worrisome. Her silence and storytelling is much more worrisome. And again, thank you, Bernadette, for that, that comment. Appreciate it. Um, so, after the video, guys, let me know the red flags that you have on Katie Proudfoot with her storytelling, um, and, you know, her silence, and, and some other things. If, it, if there's more to it than just her silence and storytelling, um, by all means, you know, leave it in the comment section and, uh, be, be interesting to see what people come up with. But, um, yeah, her silence is definitely worrisome. Uh, you know, Seth definitely ain't silent. You know, as a matter of fact, he's having a, uh, another event for Sebastian, November 9th. And by the way, guys, old Don B's got a, a birthday coming up November 8th. I think I'll be 52. I quit counting, guys. I think I'll be 52, though. But uh, old Don B's got a birthday coming up November 8th. So um, you can uh, wish me some early birthday wishes if you've got plenty of time between now and then to wish me a happy birthday. Um, and I'll remind you every now and then between here and there. Uh, but uh, let's talk about Katie Proudfoot for just a second, guys. And let me tell you what's on my mind about Katie Proudfoot. Katie Proudfoot was the only one in the house besides Sebastian the night he went missing, allegedly, right? It was just her and Sebastian and, I guess, the dog. Um, so it was supposedly just Katie and Sebastian in the house that night. Well, maybe until 3 a.m. Maybe until 3 a.m. Remember the lights? Did someone go in the house? If those lights are involved in the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, did they go in the house? Were they met in the yard? Were they met in the road? Did they go in the house? If they're involved in Sebastian's disappearance, right? It still bothers me, though, guys, that everything was locked up. The windows, the doors, that that still uh, is very suspicious to me. But, yeah, apparently Katie and Sebastian were the only ones at home the night he went missing. Maybe up until 3 a.m.
Now, and everything that I say is just my thoughts and opinions, guys. Um, and as I think about Katie, you know, everybody's like, you know, we're, we're looking at Katie hard. We're looking at Katie hard. You know, Katie was the last person to see Sebastian. And I got to thinking about Katie's relationship with Chris. And then I had, I, I, I caught myself asking a question last night. And I thought, man, I better write this down because I will forget this. And it's possibly a great question. Possibly a great question, guys. So here's the question. And I'm not accusing Katie of anything either. I'm not accusing Katie or Chris of anything. But it's just a question. Did Katie's desire for Chris overshadow her desire for her own son? And you're probably thinking, well, Don B, how can you say such a thing? Are you saying Katie loved Chris more than she did her own son? Or Katie wanted to be with Chris more than she did her own son? And again, I'm not saying they've done anything to Sebastian. But listen to this. I mean, there's always, always theories out there. But listen to this. As I asked the question, did Katie desire Chris, or did Katie's desire for Chris overshadow her desire for Sebastian? Well, let me ask you this. Did Lori Vallow's desire for Chad Daybell overshadow her desire for her kids? JJ and Tylee. Something to think about. Pretty good point, huh? Pretty good question. Not pretty good point, but pretty good question. Now, the other thing that old Don B's thinking about here is the questioning of Chris and Katie. And I just want to, you know, like, like Bernadette says, let's focus on Katie for a little bit because she was absolutely the last person to see Sebastian. So I'm sure Katie was questioned at the police station. I'm sure Chris was, you know, questioned at the police station. I'm sure a lot of people were questioned, Seth. I'm sure a lot of people were questioned at the police station. But you know what? I would love to see that interview. I would love to see the interview that Katie done with the police down at the police station. And I'll, I'll almost bet you the police definitely questioned Katie away from Chris, right? Wouldn't you love to see that? Wouldn't you love to see the questioning, the video of the questioning on Katie Proudfoot? Wouldn't you love to see and hear the way police ask her questions. Wouldn't you love to see and hear how Katie responds to those questions? I mean, if there's nothing suspicious about the interviews, why can't anybody get them released to them. If there's nothing suspicious about Katie's interview, if 
and they've been vetted, right? How come the uh, how come nobody can do it for you on the interview? And to go along with that, guys, wouldn't you love to see the body cam footage of how Katie acted when officers first arrived on the scene? Wouldn't you love to listen? To how Katie interacted with officers when they first arrived on the scene. Right. And again, I mean, if there's nothing to worry about here and Katie and Chris have been vetted and nothing to worry about, why won't police release it? Right? Why won't police release it? I'll tell you why. You know why. We're not dumb. We know exactly why police will not release the questioning of Katie Proudfoot. We know exactly why the police will not release the questioning of Chris Proudfoot. We know why police won't release the body cam of Katie Proudfoot when they first arrived on scene. We're not stupid. We know why. We know why. And again, I will say this until suspects are named, until they're officially named. Just because police say, or just because police have not publicly named any suspects does not mean they don't have any. So keep that in the back of your head until something happens, okay? So, um, yeah, it's just something to think about, guys, something to think about. I would love to see the interview that police done with Katie at the police station. I would love to see and hear the, the interview police done with Chris at the police station. Um, I'd love to see the body cam footage. You know, I mean, body language and statements, uh, you know, what if there were no tears? What if there were no tears as the body cams were rolling? What if there were no tears in the interview room? You see what I'm saying, guys? Would love to see that. So anyway, let me know what you think about my thoughts and, I guess, questions in this video. I guess it'll be thoughts and questions as far as this video goes. Um, a few opinions, a few opinions, but mostly questions. So, again, let me know if you think we should still be focused on Katie, you know, seeing how she was the last one to see Sebastian. Do you think Katie was, a, do you think Katie and Sebastian were the only ones in that house all night. Those lights. Do you think maybe somebody went in the house? Do you think somebody was let into the house? Or do you think they were maybe met out in the yard if they are involved in Sebastian's disappearance? Right? Let me know about that. And, um, you know, that question I got about you know, is Katie's desire for Chris, did it overshadow her desire for Sebastian? And as I was thinking about that last night, well, Lori Vallow's desire for Chad Daybell definitely overshadowed her desire for her own kids. So it can happen. And it has happened. So it's just something to think about, guys. Something to think about. So definitely let me know what you think. In the comment section below, <clears throat> I'm having a hard time talking. Hope I ain't getting sick. Anyway, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me ramble on. Thanks for listening to my thoughts and opinions. So it's your turn to leave your thoughts and opinions.
So head on down to that comment section below. Appreciate you for tuning in. I'll see you guys on the next video.